Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, we're going to look at a brand new game currently on Kickstarter called The Pit. This is a new one by the Dodo Corporation. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play and has a number of different modes included in it, including solo, competitive, cooperative, and a number of other ones. In the game itself, the universe is dying, and these anti-heroes don't want that to happen as they want control over this, and so they have learned about the pit that is on the edge of the universe and has the potential to grant them enormous power. The pit is guarded by all kinds of monsters, including nasty bosses and all kinds of mini-bosses and minions and everything else, and so the anti-heroes have to travel there and defeat all of them and prove themselves as the best and gain that power so that they can reshape the universe in any way that they want to. This is where you come in. You will choose one of these anti-heroes to play and go throughout two sets of four rounds. At the beginning four rounds, the players are going to be competing, trying to gain different treasures and items and upgrading their abilities by gaining power that they can use to unlock different traits that will make them more and more powerful. The final four rounds are going to be where the, the boss is going to be spawned and then the players have to kind of work together to defeat the boss. And at the end, if the boss is defeated by the fourth round, then the players will determine who is the winner by going through a number of different scoring steps. If the boss is not defeated, then all the players will lose the game. And of course, this will depend on which mode you've played or you're chosen to play. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the main features of the game, and then I'll show you a sample turn to, to help you to identify and determine if this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to get notifications anytime I release new videos, also consider ringing the bell, and that way you'll get notified when I drop some new stuff. So let's head to the table, and we'll see what this one's all about. The one other thing I want to point out is that all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are something to change and look a lot better than the final production copy of the game. They are also fine tuning some of the rules so some of the things might slightly change and some of the things that are presented in this video might change when the final production copy arrives at your door. So other than that let's go ahead and head into the game and we'll see what this one's all about. Let's start by looking at the different characters that players can play as throughout the game and there'll be four different characters included in this. Each one of these characters will have their own dashboard, which will list the name of that character on the top, along with the three tiers of talents that character can unlock throughout the game. Tier 1, 2, and 3, and this is going to be represented on both sides of the character's dashboard. Throughout the game, as the players gain power, they can place that power into those spots, unlocking that talent, and each one of these is going to be listed on the quick reference guide for that character. Each character will have an image in the middle of their board, along with their three different stats at the bottom, which will be added to their different tests as they take them. They'll have their attack, defense, and speed, which is the number of spaces they can move. Each character is also going to have a health track. As they take damage, they'll place cubes in there, and if a player is attacking another player and gets to a yellow spot, they will gain a power. If they get to a blue spot, eliminating that character, they'll gain two power for that. And then each character will have an ability that will be triggered during that player's turn if they are on their influence zone, which you'll see in a little bit. Then each character is also going to have a miniature and their ability card deck, which is going to have all kinds of different cards. For this character, we have cards such as dodge, which adds an additional defense, or fly that lets them fly. Gatling Punch, which is going to add plus one to their attack, or even Divine Gift, which will add a plus one to their attack and defense and has other effects on that card. Each player is also going to have their own tile, and this tile is going to be broken down into three zones. At the top corner of the tile is going to be that player's safe zone. In this zone, the player is going to have a number of benefits. Traps will have no effect on this zone. Different things will not be able to spawn in here, such as traps and treasure and other things. Monsters will not see the player in here, except for bosses, which are allowed to go into this zone, or other players. Finally, if a player starts in their safe zone, at the beginning of their turn, they will heal two hit points. Next is the player's influence zone, which is going to be separated by this blue line. Inside the player's influence zone, they will have a special rule on their dashboard that will be active when they are in this zone. Finally, each of the tiles is also going to have a dungeon zone, which is going to be on the other side of this blue line and will extend to the rest of the tile. In this zone, the player has no special rules, and there are no other rules that will affect this zone. 
From there, let's move over to the enemies, as you're going to have plenty of them that you're going to have to attack. There are three different types of enemies included in the game. The first are the minions, and each one of these will have a number on its board and will correspond to the main game board, as you can see here on the track. So this is going to have a spot that is going to list the number of that minion along with the hit points that it has and then each of them as the same stats as you can see here which are the attack, speed, and defense of each of those minions. The second type of enemy you're going to encounter are the mini bosses. You're going to find them inside the event deck and each time you reveal one from the event deck you'll spawn it using the 2d10 system. Each of these cards is going to list the name of that enemy in the top along with any abilities that enemy has, their stats which are a little bit more powerful than the minions, and their health track at the bottom, with the yellow cubes representing the power when a player gets to that point, and when you eliminate the enemy, you'll get two power tokens. These enemies will be represented by standees, and each one of them is going to have different abilities and stats for it. The final and ultimate enemy are going to be the bosses, and there'll be four of these included in the base game. At the beginning of the game, each the players will select which boss they would like to go up against. Each boss will have its own dashboard, and miniature go along with it. Each boss's dashboard is going to have the health tracker at the top, and as a boss takes damage, this tracker is going to be broken down into three sections. The more damage a boss takes, the more enraged it will become, and will have new abilities that will be activated as it takes damage along this track. Each boss is also going to have a quick reference guide for its actions that it's going to take during its turn, and will also have its stats, which as you can see are super nasty. Then you'll have the image of the boss, and then finally at the bottom are going to be the boss's rage abilities. When you activate a boss, you'll roll its rage die, and based on the color, it will activate that ability during its turn. Normally, you only activate one ability each time a monster activates, but some might be able to activate it multiple times. The boss will come out during the fourth turn, and if the players are able to defeat the boss by the end of the eighth round, then the players have won, and then they'll go into a scoring step to determine which player is ultimate winner. Otherwise, if the players are unable to defeat the boss, then they have lost the game by the eighth round, and they will have to try again. The final thing I want to go over is the board itself. So at the beginning of the game, depending upon the number of players that are playing, you will choose which board to use, and then you'll place the player's tiles out. At the edge of each of these tiles will be the grid system that the players will use their 2d10s throughout the game to spawn enemies, placing different tokens and walls. In the middle of the board is going to be the pit miniature, which is a beautiful miniature, but will have no bearing on the game. It is simply there to take up space during the first four rounds until the boss will come out, which will spawn in the middle of the pit, and then the, the pit will be removed. When the pit is out, none of the players or monsters can move on to that. From there, then the rest of the board is going to have all the rest of the information for the players. It will have the different stats for the minions, a spot for your treasure and event deck. It will track your rounds and the different phases in each round, which includes the event, players, monsters, and time warp. It'll also have spots for the players to place their power tokens and items that they've collected into their bag. All right, so the final thing I wanna do is take you through a sample round. So the game itself is going to be broken down into eight rounds, which is going to be separated into the first four and the second four. During each round, the players are going to go through four phases, which are the event phase, player phase, monster phase, and time warp phase. And depending upon if you're in the first four or the second four, there's different things that are going to happen. During the first four, the players are going to be trying to build up their characters, gaining power and upgrading and getting new traits and getting new items that they can use and fighting different monsters and that. During the second four, the players are going to be trying to battle the boss and defeat it. If they're able to defeat the boss by the end of the eighth round, then the players will move into a scoring step to determine which player is the most powerful and the winner of the game, or depending upon which mode the players are playing. If they don't defeat the boss, then the game is over and all of the players have lost. So moving into it, during each one of the rounds, we are going to start with the event phase. And this will be dependent upon if it's the first four or second four. During the first four, the players are going to reveal a number of events based on which number round it is. Then they're going to resolve those and place those out on the board, as well as placing a treasure or number of treasure tokens out there. So moving into round one, we'll go ahead and start with our player over here. We're gonna start by spawning a new treasure token 
So we'll go ahead and place one out here. And we have a 70 or a 10 and a seven. So we have that one there and this one here. So we'll have a treasure up here. On the other player's side, we're going to place one on nine four, which would be here. We can't place it there, so we'll have to reroll. And we have 10 and 10, so it's all the way over there in the corner. From there, then each player is going to resolve, reveal and resolve one event for, since this is round one. So our player over here has the Hellstone. So this is a trap that'll be placed. So again, we'll roll. And we have four, five. So going down the track here, four and five up is going to be placing it there. And I'll just place it off to the side so that we can reference it if we need to. And on this player's side, we have a Hellish Incarnation. So let's go ahead and roll for that. So five and seven. So five and seven is going to be here. Five there. So we'll place him out right on that spot there. All right. And then we'll place his card over so that we can reference it as we need it. So that will be the end of the event phase, and we're ready to move into the player's phase, which is going to be broken down into two different sections. The players will start with whatever player started their, their turn or has the first player token. So we're going to go ahead and have this player be the starting player. During each player's turn, they will perform two actions, and then it'll move to the next player in clockwise order to take their turn. This is going to happen twice. So after our player takes two actions, this player will take two, then this player will get to take two more, and then this player will take two, and that will be the end of the player's phase. So moving into it with our player here, let's go ahead and start by doing a move action. And we do have ability cards we can use as well, but I don't think I have anything right now that I wanna use, so I'm gonna go ahead and move. So if I move adjacent to a monster or into a monster's area, I must stop or a trap. So I have to be careful on how I move. And you also want to watch your opponents because you might be able to catch them moving into traps. And if they don't call it, you definitely want to. So I get to move up to six spaces. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And I think I'll stop there because if I move into a space that's adjacent to a monster, it gets to attack. So I do have a treasure right there. So from there, then when I expose a treasure, I can choose to do a couple of different things. I can do a free action to reveal the treasure and draw a treasure card, or I can choose to attack the treasure and that will cost an action. But if the treasure is a mimic, then I will defeat it and gain a power token for it. Otherwise, if I reveal the treasure and it's a mimic, then it attacks me and does a number of damage. But then, yeah, so bad stuff can happen. So I have to choose which way I wanna go. So I think with this one, I'm gonna risk it and I will see what it is as a free action. So I have a broken hilt. So this one is indestructible. It counts as, uh, or collect the three broken parts to obtain the endless havoc, which is gonna get me a bunch of victory points into the game. So this one will go into my backpack and then I'll remove that treasure token. So I still have one action remaining. So I'm gonna go ahead and move in here with this monster and that will trigger the monster's attack. So with the minions, they do eight damage, or their attack is eight. I have a base of five on my defense, and I will roll four dice to determine what happens next. All right, so I have one, two successes. So I will take one damage as my total is seven, and the monster's attack is eight. So I take one damage from that. So that will be the end of my turn. I don't think I want to do anything else at the moment, so I'm going to pass to the next player. So with our, my player over here, it is the start of that player's turn. And I, again, am going to have some options. So let's see here. What do I want to do? I think I'm going to start by moving to get this treasure so I can move up to eight spaces. This player is a lot quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and move there. And then I am going to go ahead and as my second action, I think I will, hmm. I'm gonna risk it as well and I will draw. It is a healing lymph and this one's gonna allow me to heal three rooms, wounds and remove one uh, pit token, which is really useful. So I'll place that over here in order to place it in my backpack and remove that treasure. So I still have one action remaining. So I'm gonna go ahead and do vanish. This one is gonna let me teleport five. I can spend an action to teleport yourself to a free space 
in a radius of five cells. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, and end there. So I basically got to teleport past the monster without triggering it, but I do move within the the Hellstone's uh, hell space, and that's going to trigger it as the Hellstone has a range of two spaces all the way around it. So this one is going to do two damage to me, so I'll place two damage tokens on there. And it's also going to give me a fatigue token. And that one is going to be the orange. So I'll place one of those on my board there. And with fatigue tokens, they are going to, for each token, the character rolls one fewer die during combat. So I gotta be careful about that. All right. And that will be the end of my turn as that was my second action. So then it moves back over to the first player to go. So this player is gonna go ahead and start by attacking that monster or the minion there, and we'll see what we get. So I have a base of five, and I'm gonna go ahead and play the shining hit. This is gonna give me plus two attack. If you deal damage, you're also gonna push the target three cells away. So we'll see what happens here with this. All right, so I've got two successes there that I'll add to my five. So that's seven, eight, nine. And he has a defense of six, so three, point, three damage get through. And he only has three hit points, so that will eliminate that minion. So I'll place him over there. And with the minions, they do not generate any uh, uh, power. So that is all I have with that. And this will be discarded to my discard area. That was my first action, so let's see. Um, I could fly, get me past some of the walls there. And Oop, I got these messed up too. These should be reversed as these are for the other players. Okay. Uh, I have one action remaining. So I think with that, I'm gonna go ahead and move one more time. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I will finish off there. I was able to go around that minion, so he is not going to attack me right now. And that will finish off that player's turn. So over to my other player to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by doing an attack action on that treasure. As we've pulled three treasure now without a minion, I don't feel like that's going to, to uh, happen again. So let's go ahead and reveal. And I was lucky. It is a mimic. So I'm going to go ahead and defeat it right away. I gain a power for that. And that will be placed over here. And then this is going to be discarded. All right, that was my first action. My second action, hmm, let's see here. What do I wanna do? I have, I'm gonna go ahead and play Dark Soul. So this is a status and it says that until the beginning of his next round, he is going to gain the ethereal status and is immune to push and pull effects. If he deals damage, the target is frightened. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that there. And that will finish that off. And he also has an ability, which I forgot to trigger earlier, which is his deadly cloud. So once per turn, each creature except for him that enters or starts its round in his influence zone obtains one poison token. So that will trigger, actually it's gonna trigger during the monsters phase, but this is this guy is in the influence zone, so he is going to suffer from the effects of that. All right, so that is going to end the player's turn. So then the monsters are going to, to take their turn. So we'll go ahead and start with the minion number one. So he's going to gain a poison token, which at the beginning of his turn, he would take a damage for that. So we'll add a damage, and that is minion number one. And then he is going to go ahead and move. His movement is seven, one, two, and so he will stop there and attack. So he's going to attack our guy for eight. So I get my defense. I am fatigued, so I lose one die for that. And I'm looking for defense. I got three successes on that. 
and I'm going to add my defensive value of five. So that is more than enough that I needed and I won't take any damage from that minion. Next are my minion over here can see me. So he's going to move as well and do the same thing, attacking me again. And again, I got two successes this time, but I also have the ethereal, which is going to be listed so the ethereal is going to half any damage rounded down, but he's always going to take at least one damage. So unfortunately, with my guy here, he does take one damage from that, but not too bad. So that will end that part of it. So then we still have these monsters here. This guy is going to move over and attack my guy there. And so he, my guy is going to roll his defense. I have five defense to start and... I have, oof, he got four more, so he's at nine. And I am going to play uh, knockback. So after undergoing an attack action, as a reaction, you can counterattack the enemy only if he is in a cell adjacent to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that and go ahead and try to attack him. And let's see what I can do here. So he has a defense of six. I have five attack. I got two successes, and I do have Blessing, which lets me re-roll. So for each combat roll, you may uh, take a defeat result and roll it again. So I do have one defeat, so I get to roll that again. And it's a hit, so I have a total of eight. So I'm going to do two damage to him. So I'll go ahead and place that on his spot, and that is minion number four. So I'll go ahead and place that there. So he is almost dead at this point, so that was pretty good. And then my minion over, or the other, the mini boss there, cannot see me right now. So he is going to go ahead and roll the die to determine the direction that he goes. And he's going to go up a number of spaces, simply to the edge of the board. All right, so that will end the monster phase. And so the final phase in the round is the time warp phase. During this phase, each player must discard a card in their hands, and they'll draw back up to their hand size of five cards. So then my player over here has to do the same thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this one here and then draw two more cards. Three more cards, because I have to get to five. All right, then at the end of that phase, this is going to move up one. And that is the end of that round. So then we move into the next round. So I hope you found this video helpful in deciding on not, whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. We're swimming by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.